Welcome, this is Professor Nathan Weezy of Marquette University. In this section, we're gonna talk about the design of a voltage mode control of a buck converter. And this is digital control power electronics. So you can see here, we have our topology up here for a buck converter. And that's shown here in black. And in blue, we have our typical structure, control structure for uh, voltage mode type control. So kind of quickly explain some of the blocks from the control side. Right here, this is our controller. And generally we measure the voltage and we compare it to the reference and we generate an error. The error is just the difference between those two. So this right here would be your error. That's fed into the controller and from that we generate in this case, essentially a duty duty ratio that we would like to switch. <clears throat> and this is comes into a uh, comparator. And we have a carrier here that we compare it against. So this is general PWM generation. This part should be pretty generic depending on your application. But that's your carrier. And then coming out of the controller, you'll have some reference and essentially what you're doing is comparing the two and when one is when the um, control output is greater than the carrier then we have a one else it's zero so you can see that this here would be our switching signal q which would go up to our switch and in purple here we have our carrier and then in blue we have a reference or a duty signal Call it the reference. Actually, let's not confuse that with the voltage reference. That's just going to be our D. Okay. So this is a pretty traditional structure for the setup of a, a digital controller. Now, typically in digital control, actually what happens inside is uh, you won't have a comparator. Um, essentially, a comparator will be an if-then-else statement. You know, if this, then if this, else that. Or... Um, even more traditionally, essentially, you'll have a PWM module and you will essentially just write the duty cycle to that. And prior to writing that, you have initialized all the um, settings for the PWM module, set the frequency, um, whether it's up down mode or up down, up mode only or down mode only, and vice versa. But, anyways, today we're just going to focus on in this section um, how to design the controller and the estimate and then in subsequent sections we'll focus on getting that to the digital domain so we're going to kind of start in one spot um, from classical power electronics this is the plant so at this point we're not going to go over how to get the plant I think that's reserved more reserved for a, a intro to power electronics class but essentially this tells us how the output voltage behaves with duty cycle perturbations. And this is a small signal model. So essentially what you have here is you have a complex pole pair in the bottom in your plant. And then you also have a zero. And that zero is due to the ESR. So what is the ESR? So this this C up here would be the capacitor, but the small R would actually be right here, the small equivalent series resistance. And then capital R of course would be this resistance, the load resistance, L would be our inductance, and then V in would be the voltage from the input. And that would be all the variables here in this plant. So here we'll put this small r as the ESR. And just so we're absolutely clear, the big R is the load resistance. Okay. All right, so we're going to do our example today um, based upon the K-factor approach in terms of designing things. So we're going to start with these parameters. We'll have an input voltage of 30 volts, an output of 15. So just assuming we're in CCM, this would be a duty cycle of 50% in steady state. Um, we'll have an inductance of 200 microhenry, capacitance of 400 microfarad, an ESR of um, 0.1 ohm, and a, and a max output power of about 5 ohms. So if you if you got to do the math at 15 volts R equals 5 ohms you're at 3 amps right and so 3 amps times uh, 15 volts you're at about 45 watts so 
I'm just doing some quick math here. So three amp max out and then P out max will be about 45 watts. Okay, just raw numbers. I'm not talking about efficiency here or anything, just assuming everything's ideal. So first thing you wanna do when you're designing the controller, if this is kind of what you have for your parameters, is you wanna go ahead and, and with the K-factor approach, you wanna you want to plot the body plot of the plant transfer function. So that'd be equation one. You'd fill in all those parameters and you'd sweep J omega and omega is just your frequency. And you'll come up with this. So this is the plant, this is the plant transfer function. And I actually ran this here for a couple different values of R. You can see here, um, there's actually three different plots here. And so what's happening here is I'm actually sweeping the load R I'm going from the max load of 5 ohms and then I'm going up to say uh, 50 ohms and then 500 ohms just to take a look at what's happening as you lighten the load. As you lighten the load, you can see you're getting kind of a resonant peak. But I just wanted to check this because uh, your plant will move on you, right, depending on the output load and, and you can't predict the load and in general you usually don't know the load. The phase doesn't move too much. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. But just taking a look at this, it's always important to kind of look at the plan and see how it changes over uh, over different variables. And you could repeat this exercise very easily in a MATLAB script and kind of sweep out, for instance, output capacitance, if you have some tolerance in that manufacturing. Um, and you could do the same for inductance. You could do the same for your ESR. You could do, um, you could sweep those values over what you think they'll be 10 years from now, if it's kind of a long, um, time application or a longevity application where you need it to run for a really long time. So you know, at, at first kind of glance, we're going to design it for one operating point, but what you're going to want to do is kind of go back once this design is done and sweep these values of C, L, and ESR, and just kind of make sure it maintains stability and the performance you want over parameter variation at manufacturing and also at... Um, lifetime so after 10 years you know is the capacity is 20 percent of what it was or is it 80 percent of what it originally was etc so that's really important to look at all right so in the k-factor approach here we are going to use this controller here which has essentially got an integrator right our integrator is this k by s and we have two poles and two zeros, and they're at the same spot. And remember, I talked about this in a previous section. Essentially, what we're going to do with the K-factor approach is kind of move these poles and zeros in and out until we get the right amount of phase boost. Once we have that, we'll solve for the right amount of K gain to make the open loop transfer function cross over at the bandwidth in which we desire. Remember, the, the bandwidth has, has a strong correlation to rise time, or in other words, the response of your system, and phase margin has a strong correlation to uh, damping of your system. So, you know, kind of a rule of thumb is you'd really like to have at least 60 degrees of phase margin for nice, nice good damping. And uh, depending on what your application is, I mean, it, that will determine your bandwidth, but like if you're trying for one millisecond um, rise time then you know you can just go one over one millisecond so you're looking for one kilohertz of bandwidth so just depends your application is going to kind of drive those but just to give you an idea of what those are so in order to design this controller really what you need to do is find uh, omega p omega z and uh, um, k there's three gains that you have you essentially are finding and once once you find these the controller design really is done you can just evaluate its performance <clears throat> So the first thing you want to do is find the gain and phase of the plant at your um, desired crossover frequency. So this is the gain and this is the phase at your desired bandwidth. So in this application, actually, I think I have some MATLAB script for you, but I want to go check. Yeah, so I, sec I selected in this example 5 kilohertz. Let's go back up here quick and just kind of take a look at where we're going to land. Um, so if you look at this this transfer function, 10 to the 3, that should be 10 times 10 would be 100 times another 10 would be 1,000. So this is 1,000 hertz. And this should be 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So just looking at this line here, we ought to get this gain in this phase where this cross, that should be of our plant. And actually when you look at that, at least over load variation, that point doesn't even move. Um, so that's interesting. So those are the two numbers that I should get spit out when I get the gain in phase. So you want to find those two numbers. You can do them in MATLAB. And so I actually go ahead and do that. I'll show the, the first couple lines of my MATLAB script. So I'm clearing everything out. 
I'm setting S as a transfer function, setting some options for the Bode plot. So I just want it to be in Hertz instead of radians, which it defaults to. Setting my initial conditions or parameters for the converter, which I defined at the beginning. And then line 11 essentially here is defining the transfer function of the plant, which we have defined up above. And then we're going to define our bandwidth, our phase margin, and we're going to go ahead and calculate the phase. So we have here is line 18. We'll take the body of GPS, which was defined right here. And guess what we're going to pass in? We want to get the gain and phase back at a single point, and that is right here, 2 pi FC, where FC is 5 kilohertz. So what's going to happen in this MATLAB code is that essentially gain and phase will be the gain and phase of the plant transfer function at 5 kilohertz. And of course, this is scriptable, so if you want to change this later on for a different frequency, by all means. Okay, so once we do that, we'll have the gain and the phase. In order to determine how much phi boost you need, which would be this line, essentially what you're going to do is set your phase margin. In this example, we'll do 60 degrees. You need to subtract 90. Why? Because you have an integrator. You already start off with minus 90 degrees. And you also need to subtract how much um, phase you have due to the plant. Once you do that math, it'll tell you how much phi boost you need from the controller in order to get the desired phase margin that you have selected. The next thing here is K boost. What this will do is find the ratio between omega Z and omega P in order to achieve that phi boost. So this is the term in the K boost ratio. And that ratio determines again how far omega Z and omega P are apart. This will determine uh, controller gain. So how much gain do I need for my controller in order to cross over at the bandwidth of a gain one? And then once we have that, these are the locations of the zero and the pole of the controller. So it's not too bad working through these equations. Now down here in my MATLAB script, essentially I've worked through that step by step. You can see I have phi boost. I essentially set this, my phase margin, which I did up here. I set it to 60 degrees, and what will happen is phi boost is how much uh, phase boost I need from the controller. And then um, I'll calculate K boost. That would be this line here. That's essentially the ratio in order to obtain that amount of phi boost. Then I'll determine how much gain I need from the controller in line 21. And then we have the location of our zero and pole in hertz. And then I redid it down here just in radians. This is, they're essentially the same thing, just depends on wh whether you want them in hertz or radians. I like to look at things in hertz, some people like radians. Um, when we define our transfer function radians as well. And then lastly, this is the gain needed from the controller, this is the gain of the controller, okay? So Kc is how much gain um, we'll have in the controller. In other words, that's the K over S, the integral gain. So once you do that, you'll get a bunch of values for K, omega Z, and omega P, and you can go ahead and try these out. For a controller so let's see when i went ahead and ran this script these are the values i got out so my zero is at approximately 12,000 radians the pole is at 82,000 radians and the integral gain is approximately 7,300 now what i've done next here is i plotted my controller game or my controller transfer function and what you see here is let's look at this so this would be right here that's one killer it's two three four five this right here is at 5 kilohertz. And this is how much gain I have of my controller. This is interesting because I'm going to show you how this works here in a second. And this is the fee boost. You can see fee boost should always be peaking at where the bandwidth um, is crossing over in this type of design, in a K-factor approach type of design. Now, the gain, I don't know. Let's just kind of eyeball this. It's uh, a couple dB. Let's say 3, 4 dB. I'm going to go back up and look at our plant transfer function for a second. Yeah, so if you look at this, this is interesting. The dB here is probably like minus 3 or 4 dB. So when you have 3 dB plus minus 3 dB, you're essentially at 0 dB, which means 0 dB is a gain of 1. In other words, we've designed the controller properly to push the open loop transfer function um, to cross through a gain of 1 at 5 kilohertz. So that part we verified. We can also look at the phase here. Uh, again, let's just eyeball it. It's some value slightly above zero. I don't know, call it 10 degrees, 9 degrees. And let's look at the phase of our plant here. Yeah, if we look here, we're not adding a lot of degrees to this because we're almost at a phase margin to start of 
um, 60 degrees. Remember, phase margin, let's just draw it in here, is how far you are away from minus 180. So that would be from here, this would be phase margin. And if you're slightly above 135, you're not at the minus 120. Minus 120 is where I need to be to get 60 degrees of phase margin. So I boosted, say, 10 degrees here. I'll get what I need. I'll get 120 degrees of phase at that point or 60 degrees of phase margin. <clears throat> So that's a good check whenever you look at it, and this is why I have these body plots in here. You can quickly visually check to see if your controller actually did what you thought it did when you're number crunching these, these uh, controller gains. Okay, so we look at the open loop transfer function now, which is essentially GC times GP. So essentially I'm doing the same thing as I just described, but now you can see the two multiplied together. This would be two, three, four, five kilohertz. You can see right here we pass through gain of zero dB, which is perfect. This is how we designed it. And lastly, let's check out our phase. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Right here. You can see this is roughly minus 120 degrees at five kilohertz. And essentially what we have here is a phase margin of about 60 degrees. That means again, we are about 60 degrees away from minus 180 when we cross over again. Okay, all right. So now we go ahead and calculate GCL, which is GOL over one plus GOL. Essentially, what we would like to see is a low pass filter. Um, this is interesting because you can see here, we go flat here and then actually we have a little bit of gain here at this frequency right here. And let's call it anywhere from one to two kilohertz. You have this gain and then it, then it rolls off kind of like a low pass filter. And we'll, we'll talk about what this means here shortly. <clears throat> Okay, so um, let's move on to all four plots. We have them all together just so you can see how the design goes in terms of working with the Bode plot. Now, um, you may assume that we number crunch this as a really good design, but we'll show you that you know, we could do a lot better. So, okay, first and foremost, let's look at the step response. So we're running along in steady state. Here's our output voltage, and we have a, a step load from 10% to essentially... Um, full load so remember full load was around three amps well that'd be right here and we're down here so this is more when we're at 10 percent. this is like 300 milliamps so we're going from 10 percent up to full load 100 percent in this step this is a pretty um stringent step here so it's just to kind of test the controller and, and kind of test it under worst case conditions worst case is probably stepping from zero load to full load so you can see, um, depending on what your application is looking for, you can see that here you have a dip of, I don't know, approximately, let's call it uh, 200 millivolts. And you know, this may not be good enough for your application, it really just depends. Um, if you need it better, you may have to redesign C and L, or you may have to change your bandwidth of your system. One thing that I'll say here is, um, oh yeah, so this was the, I forgot to, this is our current here, and this is the output voltage. You can see the current goes up and rises and then settles down at three amps, which is what we want. You can also see the duty cycle. Actually, you see a signal that goes over one, but uh, over one doesn't really mean anything in terms of duty cycle, so it actually we actually saturate that command because there's no realization uh, above one. And so that's what the, the actuation, control actuation looks like. And you can see, remember, we're at 50%, right? Here's 50%. And then guess what? We're still in CCM when we settle. Again, we're at 50%, which is what we expected with a buck converter in CCM. But one thing I'll say about this design is it's not the greatest design. This is just to go through and try to practice the design process. It is a controller. It will work. It may not be optimal. Now, one thing when looking at this Bode plot here, is something that's very interesting in the open uh, loop response is you have this and generally you don't want this and what, what am I talking about not wanting well you don't want the phase to cross over minus 180 before the gain crosses through zero this is generally called positive feedback uh, is the easiest way to describe it you have a signal that's more than 180 degrees out of phase and you have a positive gain at that time that generally doesn't lead to good things happening now um, the result actually is you have a, a gain here that is above one and, and since this is a closed loop response it, it won't be too bad because this is actually from the reference to the output voltage but if you ever use this controller, for instance, and you were changing your reference 
at let's say what is this frequency uh, one to two kilohertz you would actually have a gain um, greater than one which is probably not desirable okay so this is again this is the complex pole pair showing up let's go back up here uh, to the plant for a second here this is due to the complex pole pair right here this right here and generally what you'd like to do is probably put your zero before that so that you don't get that response or you can dampen this better so you have a better smooth response you like a nice flat response and then roll off instead of flat and then some gain above one and then down okay in general so again this is just practice see with the k-factor approach we can do a better design in the future but this is just to get you some uh, experience with working with this type of design process okay this concludes our talk for the digital control design of a voltage mode buck converter thank you